In this video, I struggle to win the soul of Columbia. Back about 20 years ago, this is Andy and Abyss, GMT's game of insurgency and counterinsurgency in Columbia by Volko Runke. This is Legendary Tactics. Welcome to Legendary Tactics. I'm Nato Potato. We're going to be playing the solo version of Andy and Abyss. I really like the published version of this. Uh, I bought the game originally when it came out in 2012, and uh, the solo version that came with it I think is, is excellent. It's a lot less finicky than the other solo versions, uh, such as Fire in the Lake or Falling Sky, which can be quite uh, finicky. Uh, the flowcharts can get pretty involved, and uh, it's because the the game itself, I think, is the, the coin series has gotten a lot more sophisticated over the years, and uh, they have attempted to make the AI more uh, sophisticated as well, which is a good thing, but at the cost of some complexity. So, anyway, <clears throat> this is the standard setup. Uh, as I said, we're going to be using the original bots, not the. I know they've edited the bots over the years, but I like the, you know, these ones. I think they're just fine, and they give a good challenge. You can lose very quickly if you're not paying attention, and or if you're a bit unlucky. Um, I'll be playing probably two or three games for the channel, uh, just so you can see the wide range of of uh, things that can go wrong in a solo game and what can go right on occasion. So. Um, anyway, we'll take things from here. So the first card is going to be uh, this one here. I'm Carabineros. I'm, hopefully, I'm saying that right. Basically, they're uh, you know the higher grade police that were uh, national police field forces that were put into areas that were deemed too dangerous for regular police, uh, but they ended up colluding with the uh, paramilitaries. So the AUC, who's first up on this card, is going to take that event. When I roll randomly, Kukuta and Cartagena, Cartagena sorry, <clears throat> are going to be the victims of this uh, collusion. And I'm going to uh, get some AUC right in my cities on the very first move. Never a good thing. <clears throat> and the cartels are up next. Uh, so they're going to... I'm going to st start using white, uh, white pawns here as soon as I can. Um, they're going to be rallying. Um, and going to be rallying at all the bases without protection. And one random spot there <clears throat> where they're going to cultivate to place a base. The cartels are really the long-term enemy in this game. They start out so quiet and you know weak and and that sort of thing, and they get up to be really powerful really fast and this is why because they start sprouting bases all over the place you know just when you're when you're not looking so um, <clears throat> very important to keep them at bay especially in the in this first campaign uh, if you can really minimize the number of bases they have it can really slow them down you can't beat them but you can slow them down and and uh, give them a little less money in the early going if they don't get their money requirement by the the second or even the third campaign you're doing really well um, or I should say the third maybe the fourth campaign but uh, but they will get there eventually and <laughs> they're just uh, there's just too many distractions to be able to keep them fully uh, fully contained so they're just going to uh, get set up there and then we'll move on to the next card so the FARC they are going to take Raul Reyes of course, they're going to take those resources and they're going to place a base. So they're up to 16 resources. <clears throat> and they get their base in Santander. Um, so that was based on uh, the their um, the random roll. Uh, and I'm up next. <clears throat> now, for the government, my first move almost always, unless there's some crazy opportunity, is to rally. Uh, this game seems to be set up more or less, you know, you want to rally everyone on the first move. It's going to set you up for the really for the rest of the the game. Uh, just get all your players on the board. Um, you, you will need to rally occasionally throughout because the, your guys will take losses, but 
you may as well just max that out. It spends it takes a lot of resources, but uh, you know, is a is a, a good idea. Get all your guys down there so then you can start um, extending your, your power. So I'm gonna airlift into Choco. Uh, again my goal is to basically lock down the mountains and the jungles to the west of Bogota and uh, then we'll worry about the east later. So I'll just uh, see if I can take control. Um, part of this is a it's a it takes a few stages really. You need to uh, basically end with control of a territory at the first prop card then move some police in then you have to kind of get your more tr move your troops back in and then it allows you to uh, do the um, civic action uh, at the time of the second prop card so as m if you can control as many places after the first prop card uh, at the first prop card and then have police in there uh, in the, as many territories as possible for the second prop card that's going to really set you up to, to lock these places down. One of the, the keys to this is that a, uh, a department or a city that's at uh, any sort of uh, support of the government uh, becomes offside for FARC rallies. And uh, AUC, I see as much more benign as far as the government schools are like they're you, they're kind of a symbiotic like a pilot fish kind of concept um, and so that way you only really need to worry about keeping the cartels in check in that area so that's always my goal so I'll just airlift into there and we'll get rid of that card next card up is the ELN and uh, this card because it has the second ops thing at the top left means basically the uh, AUC and the uh, cartels are just going to take their ops this turn. They're not going to worry about their, um, you know, they're not going to take it, the event. So, so the AUC are going to rally. They have opportunities to rally at FARC bases and build up the, that central Antioquia uh, Bolivar is uh, a major AUC stronghold in the solo game and likely in the multiplayer games as well but certainly in the solo game this becomes a real stronghold and and uh, you know which is fine the FARC aren't going to breed there <laughs> but uh, and, and it because there's no base building opportunities the cartels will stay out um, but it's uh, also great if you can get the Antioquia or, to support it's unlikely the AUC are going to mess with that so it's always good if you can get that there. So they're going to do their extortion where they can. It's kind of a one-shot deal for the AUC until the prop card most times. <clears throat> and then the uh, the uh, cartels are going to rally and... Oh, sorry, I messed up there. They can't cultivate in a city, so... They needed to be in a department. Not sure why they're called departments, but that's what they call them. <clears throat> okay, so uh, FARC is up next to take some ops, and they're going to do some rallying around, um, which is typical for the FARC at this stage. Now, because they rallied in Choco, um, I'm kind of, I have to make sure I control that area so I can move the police in. At the prop card so they're going to be doing some extortions as well to recoup some assets and I'm gonna pass because we got an event coming up here that I'd like to to take so this one is uh, basically three free airstrikes and I'll airstrike a base away always a a great thing. Get that AUC out of there. Yeah, struck everyone relatively evenly. Um, the three free airstrikes can be amazing if there's exposed bases, and there was one, so that's why I wanted to uh, to take it. AUC. They're gonna rally some more in the area. Do a bit of extortion. <clears throat> And occasionally, because of the random rolls, they do end up with uh, some guys appearing in the jungle. 
Um, a lot of times they're dead pieces, but sometimes it can be surprising how uh, a supposedly dead piece comes back and helps you out in a big way because they kill off a base. And as you might expect, the uh, cartels are going to rally again. So are the FARC. <laughs> again, they're taking their time to build up their Uh, there guys so there and that actually worked out perfectly for me and Choco because if I can strike quickly those bases are going to be dead and we'll get uh, the FARC out of there and it'll be a pretty tough for them to get back technically they can rally in, in uh, Choco but it depends on the roll of the dice they have to be lucky on that so then they're going to do some extortion <clears throat> recoup some money and you see is next up for uh, Kalima front so this I play this if you place the terror in the department with troops um, that the support it's not just the terror that's placed I assume it, there's terror terrorism done which hurts the support I couldn't find actually any rule clarification on that but we'll just go with that and um, so they just do that and they trash my aid down to zero was at nine but Samper is the president um, and Samper does not receive any aid uh, in the at the first prop card so until he's replaced by Pastrana it doesn't really matter what the aid number is we can try and rebuild that later so we're gonna do some uh, some sweeping get some uh, troops where we need them in this game there's always so much to do and not enough time but we got to do what we got to do and did an airstrike to get rid of one of the bases in Choco so not ideal but hopefully uh, hopefully we'll get another shot at that before uh, before the opportunity is gone um, and we've exposed a lot of uh, a lot of bad get bad guys there so So kill zone is the next one up. They're going to do some ambushing. And I'm just doing some rolling to see where the ambushes are going to happen. And they're going to happen there. They're going to get rid of those AUC guys. Uh, the AUC are deadly for the FARC, especially in those spaces where they can assassinate uh, any bases away. So, um, And so we'll get some shipments happening uh, because uh, they have got uh, less than 10 pieces left and there's no bases that are placeable so you're going to place a shape, uh, shipment uh, here and, uh, and down here in uh, Meta West. And shipments are awesome if you can steal them but a lot of times they end up in areas that are a little bit out of the government's reach. So now the AUC are going to rally again. So some of my sweeping has been undone, unfortunately. And they can extort, as always, in Antioquia. Um, I'm going to pass because General Offensive is coming up, and that is not an event that I want to, uh, you know, to have <laughs> happen. A um, whole bunch of attacks and that sort of thing. I want that to. I want to have control of that. Um, and also the event here doesn't interest me. The um, actually, sorry, I should say <clears throat> the event here doesn't really interest me. Um, it, it mildly interests me to have the the cartels try and wreak havoc, but it's a lot of low odds die rolls. So I'm gonna I know the FARC is gonna take this event, and so um, I will I want to be able to use this an op and special activity on my next turn. So I'm gonna pass, take some resources and they take the event and there's going to be a whole bunch of die rolling here as they are attacking like crazy they are helping me out they're taking uh, taking out some of the cartels they do get a shipment uh, out of that in Meta West as you can see and it's going to be a few low odds attacks they're going to miss with 
Okay, so now I get my uh, plus special. So now's the time to assault, try and take out all these uh, FARC pieces. Now I moved in uh, eight troops on purpose because uh, troops kill two for one in the mountains. So this will allow me to eliminate the FARC there and the FARC there and a, and a few, um, uh, you know, an AUC piece or two. And um, then I'm going to air, or sorry, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to do uh, my eradication uh, in that space. Or sorry, airstrike in that space. Sorry, eradicate. I didn't want to use eradicate because of uh, Huila here. Um, they, Huila is, uh, I don't want that square switching to, uh, to uh, opposition. Oh, and so I think this is where, oh, what happens here? I'm trying to remember what I did. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I wanted to assault in uh, Kali as well. So that was very important, get those guys out of there. Okay, so the DOD uh, contractor's card, um, the AUC will take this event, so um, that's going to make things a bit uh, tougher for me. Um, the cartels are just going to rally and uh, place another base. They're going to cultivate. So they're going to move all of us um, to be ineligible, which um, I was kind of hoping for the chess player card uh, next turn to have access to that. Um, but instead, I have to remove three troops. And this is, again, why it's you know not a big deal. If you got all your pieces down, it's a good, you know, good thing because you've got all your pieces there to uh, recover. But like you, you've got all those pieces there to, uh, you know, absorb the losses. And now I've got six pieces up here, you know, so I can do a limb op train and maybe a civic action in there as well. And it'd be, you know, absolutely perfect. So, and we move on. None of us are eligible this card, so it's a bit of a rare occurrence. And the prop card is is up. So, he's going to fly some of his guys around and go underground and cartels are going to rally and cultivate again just in time for the prop card so victory no one's close at the moment so that's easy and then we go through and <clears throat> give all the the resources cartels are up to 23 government uh, no sabotaged LOCs so we're up to full space cart uh, the um, Cartels get some extra money for the uh, uh, shipments, so does the uh, FARC down in uh, Meta West. Now I'm going to shift Santander, get that to passive support. I try not to go to active support, and it's too expensive in the early going. I'll just put down the control markers here so you can see. Um, just get it to passive support um, just to save them on the cost. Now, um, Pastrana gets uh, elected, so he's going to create a FARC zone, and this time it's in Meta West, so no government activity uh, there. Nope. Okay, so there's no government activity there, and uh, the uh, AUC gets elite backing in the middle of the jungle, which is interesting. And I'm going to move my troops back and rearrange things and again I want to be more or less to have two police per territory that I control I'm gonna throw some police up on the LOCs because I know the the FARC will be marching as soon as they get uh, as soon as they get up to speed so I want to be able to uh, sweep um, on the LOCs so anyway we, re we redeployed I've got everything now I didn't do a great job with getting control. I like to have control of Nariño at the first campaign and uh, potentially Cesar or Atlantico as well. That's kind of an ideal situation. Didn't happen, so we're, uh, we're gonna move on. Prop card is done. And I am up first now. Missile uh, 
anti-aerial is a deadly card, especially early in a campaign, because basically it means I can't use any special activities where there are gorillas. So it really limits my special activities, um, but there's nothing I can do about that. So um, here I can add some aid, but really, <clears throat> I think uh, at this point I want to, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll take the aid, because the aid is, is really going to come in uh, handy. Um, now that Pristrana can receive it, that's a big boost to our resources, so we want to do what we can. And certainly enough in the campaign, I can recover from things. Cartels, uh, Rally, and Cultivate. Of course, Fark, take that event. We'll move that down to the Insurgent Momentum cards. That's until the next prop card. Hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, I can't use any special activities where there are gorillas, so... Uh, AUC are going to rally because they can throw down a couple bases. Get some men in, and they will extort where they can. <clears throat> They're actually fairly well funded. AUC can go pretty broke in a game like this. To have 12 resources is pretty good for them. Um, of course, uh, the uh, drug lords are going to take the opportunity to place in a base and I did a roll and that's where they ended up in uh, Cesar. They got a shipment there as well. I'm going to pass because I have a, an event coming up next turn. And this is the classic dilemma that comes up every time in Andean Abyss. What to do when you have two events back to back. Plan Meteor Meteoro uh, is okay. Um, if I have to lose that ability I don't really mind it's not the end of the world I can live with it so I am going to uh, make sure that this event can't be blocked because I don't want to lose my uh, my base uh, in uh, Santander so I'm just gonna do a limop train and civic action in uh, Kali to uh, prevent any FARC from rallying there at any point and the FARC are going to rally and uh, place some bases after the cartels vacated that. And they'll be doing some uh, extortion to recoup the assets. So cartels are actually going to do a march. They're going to march and play, do some shipments in uh, Putamayo and Nariño and they move into Choco just to mess with my control there and the AUC is going to block my plan Meteoro they're going to take the uh, the shaded version of the event so that's uh, it is what it is I have another uh, good event here um, I can get a bunch of resources um, but I think the time to strike is now I need to sweep I need to you never know when that prop card's coming up Again, under the classic coin rules, you shuffle them in and you really don't know exactly where they're going to turn up. Um, I know the recent kind of remixes of it will have you shuffle the prop card in the bottom few cards of a, of a, of a stack so that it always turns up towards the end of the um, campaign. But uh, this is in classic rules, that wasn't the case. So I'll do a whole bunch of sweeping and uh, just try and get into those uh, cartel strongholds um, they're already up to nine bases and I really have to watch that if a, if a card comes up and they get a bunch of resources from that it's could be bad so oh sorry I just went a little bit too quick there so the the um, because the uh, FARC doesn't have the opportunity to take the event they're just gonna do some more rallying around and they get to uh, do some extortion again. Nothing too interesting, but they're about to be on the move, so the FARC needs to build up their forces pretty big and then they, they move. Uh, again, the uh, the cartels march and they're making more shipments of drugs, more money for them, and the AUC, uh, because the uh, two ops here there's uh, the second ops uh, thing on the top left means that they will not give the FARC any resources. They're just going to uh, do a bit of marching and uh, 
that's all they're up to really. So I'm just rearranging some things for an order, just in preparation for the FARC march, which always requires a bit of organization. So the FARC begins to move on all the LOCs, ready to cut off my money and we even march into the city where they can sneak in. So these are where their march ends up being. They actually march, march into Bogota. I've got a bit of a crowded room there, so I'm going to put them in the overflow box. And uh, yeah, a bit more dice rolling just to make sure we've got it all set up. I've just marked this with government control just so we know which uh, space we're talking about. And the march continues, and uh, I do, uh, after uh, doing a, a march, do a bit of extortion just to recoup some, some money. Now I'm here with the uh, either the event, uh, remove one opposition or one FARC base. Um, I think I'm just I well actually here's where I I made him a I made a mistake here it's not a mistake but I uh, just to make sure it's clear here because I hit undo after doing a move I was going to do an assault in uh, Bogota just to clear out those guys but instead um, I ended up doing this um, so in the north here in Cesar there's one exposed gorilla without a uh without who is uh carrying a a shipment so that gives me a free limb up so i take the limb up do an assault in cesar and wipe out a base and a gorilla that gives me that gives me a free limb up so i take the limb up down here where there's an exposed gorilla and a whole bunch of troops and so I kill them off. That gives me another shipment, which I use for another limb up in this space. Now, normally, I've never pulled off this move before, but um, it allowed me to, because I use the shipment here, and then I do the attack in Bogota, allowed me to kind of have a nice chain reaction there <clears throat> to uh, do a, some major damage to the cartel. They're down to four bases, which is great. Um, and potentially, I can get one more um, next turn depending on what they do I think they're gonna just rally back though so um, so anyway there they're gonna rally um, rally around play some bases <clears throat> those bases are good if you can get to them quick they can be killed off pretty quick but as soon as they the the uh, cartels have another chance they're gonna put uh, some gorillas there to protect those uh, those uh, cocaine fields. The uh, AUC takes the event, place a FARC zone, and that actually benefits me. The events sometimes actually help you out, so I was able to f move uh, Huila to, um, to, to uh, support me. Now the FARC are getting very close to this red line. You see this red line here, 26. That's, that's their victory conditions. Cartels need their uh, bases uh, and they're, they need their resources at 40, and uh, they need uh, uh, I think a number of I think 10 bases down, <clears throat> and the AUC need more ba more bases down than the than the FARC. So the FARC are right at the line right now. So I'm gonna make have to try and make sure that uh, we we hit those guys. Now um, AUC is gonna take this event, and uh, due to random roll, and I just randomly rolled these guys around the board and clean me right out unfortunately and then they place a couple of bases in a couple of cities because that's what they want to do is get bases down There's still FARC is still in full full strength in bases though so no risk there um, now I'm going to do a couple of assaults and an airstrike because even though this is in force there's no guerrillas guarding that um, that uh, base. I'm able to get an easy kill out of that move. <clears throat> now they do crop substitution, shift the department of the cartel's base 
uh, two levels towards uh, active opposition. So it's only a couple of uh, of candidates. Is either Atlantico or or Huila. So roll. I was going I said one to three is Atlantico. Four to six is Huila. And Huila flips to opposition. That is not good. <clears throat> Fark is in winning position already, so have to deal with those. Um, the cartel, they are going to rally and cultivate. So they're back in Nariño. It's like whack-a-mole. Every time you think you got them down, they're going to uh, do something. So the Fark are going to march. A lot of this event was uh, nullified because um, there wasn't uh, any opportunity to uh, ambush with their guys because they were all face up. And I am currently broke, so I have to pass. <clears throat> I have no option. So, oh, prop card. And that isn't good. Because I will have an action, but the uh, this is... Um, they're gonna. Uh, the cartels are gonna take this event, which is gonna give them four times the number of bases uh, for their income. But that leaves me with only one available op. I've only got four resources. I can only do one thing. So they take that, and there's really nothing I can do. And after a bit of thought, basically, I take out the the AUC base in Bogota. And that's it. You can see how fast this game can turn on you. If it hadn't, if I'd rolled a one to three, and then Atlantico would have gone to neutral, and instead I rolled a four to six, and Huila flipped, and it was right close to the propaganda card. I had no opportunity to um, to do anything. In retrospect, I might have, instead of flipping uh, Huila to uh, positive and um, and so forth I should have maybe taken this guy down the opposition but uh, anyway that's how fast this game can flip it's a real challenge uh, there's a lot of things that I feel I, I missed um, didn't feel like I was quite as sharp uh, I was, when I was playing solo games a lot uh, I found I was quite sharp and I, it was like almost like executing a perfect play in football you know you, it's the, the fun is in trying to pull off the, the perfect gameplay um, even if it is kind of predictable and even if the bots are a bit predictable um, it's about trying to pull off that perfect play when all the odds are against you so that's been um, my first attempt at a solo uh, solo game here uh, for the channel we'll do better next time but thanks for watching please like and subscribe this has been legendary tactics